Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm smiling because we're talking about other stuff that has nothing to do with Everton. It's great. Uh, but, but now we actually have to go back to the, the, the funeral dirge that is, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, now, we, now we're back to earth. Uh, so uh, the managerial situation is we're not optimistic is what is the best way to, to say that. Um, especially when you hear a lot, you know, number one, there's, there's been zero announcement that has stated anything, either support or sacking information uh, on Silva. Neither one has come out. There's been some stuff that came out that said Silva would still be in charge on Monday. That's true. He was. There was a rumor that said that he had been sacked on Sunday and that Unsworth was taking temporary charge and that the U23s were not going to be reporting today. That was not true. Okay? This is the way it works. All right? And if, you're, and if you believe everything you hear about this stuff, you're new to Everton. Okay? Because this is always the way it is. Um, but it's also not surprising that there's been no decision uh, and, and no very decisive action. Because, again, this is Everton. This is the way it works. None of us are surprised by that. All right? So, um, so I'm going to start. I want Terry to start. Because I want to start with can you make an argument for Silva to stay? We're going to start with that. Okay? And then we'll move toward the other possible solutions. Can you make an argument for Silva to stay? Make it quick because I don't imagine it's a long argument. Go. Um, my, the biggest argument for Silva to stay is if those are, in fact, the four options we've got that have been widely reported. Um, have you mentioned the names yet? I don't think you have. I haven't. I've been saving them, but you want to mention them? Yeah. Um, David Moyes, Mark Hughes, Eddie Howe, and Mikel Arteta are the four, at this point, names in the frame, according to the press. And if those are the options, I don't want them for different reasons for each one, which I can go through if you like. But if it's if it's one of them, keep Silva. We'll get keep this. Silva for me. Oh, yeah, that's your... That's your yeah. Okay, so... I, Terry taking a surprising I, stance. I, actually. If you present me someone who is a market improvement on silver, I'd be happy to take it. If you present me four options who are better than silver, I'll pick one. If you present me those four crabs, I don't want them. I don't think silver is good enough, but I still think he's better than them, personally. All right. So, Thomas, can you give me a pro silver? argument i think i think it speaks volumes about him at the moment that pretty much the only reason he's still here is not making the managerial change again to not disrupt the the progress the progress that he's made you know changing the manager it changes everything around the club and i'm pretty sure the only thing that's kind of him hanging on here is they don't want to make another change as they have done pretty much since david moises have a manager for a season then he's buying the second one but that's not a good enough reason let's be honest you know he it, it, <laughs> To say that a manager has to say in order to not disrupt the progress or the change they made, the club is rubbish. The club needs results, and that's more important than anything else. So that's the only argument I can really think of that he's only still here because it's it's wrong to change your manager after one and a half seasons, but it's not. Okay, there's that. Now, Paul, I'm sure you've got a lot of reasons for Silva to stay. The only argument I can think of, and it's it's not an argument I agree with, it's not a particularly strong argument, is do we wait until a few players come back from injury and see if that makes a difference? Like Gabamin, um, Fabian Delph, uh, who else? If, if Moyes Keane, do we wait until Moyes Keane gets fully settled and in the team properly? Because the team we've been playing so far this season is definitely not the team that he probably had in mind in the summer. So, you know, do we wait until his his signings get fully settled and are fit? I think that's an argument he put across. He gets called into the office by Mishiri and says, look, I don't think it's working out. I think that's what he'd say. Look, you have to give me more time. A lot of things out of my control have gone against me. Just let my signings bed in. But I think, to be honest, I don't think that's a good enough reason. I think we've seen too many bad things that have the writing's on the wall basically I, don't, I just don't think anything's going to improve massively at all 
if we keep him. So we might as well just move on. Um, these are reasons. Uh, I I was thinking of the you know do we consider the injuries, you know that you just mentioned. Uh, do we consider that anybody we bring in will have to be dealing with a very difficult winter period? That schedule is is not favorable, uh, and it's and it would be a real challenge for anyone new coming in, right? Especially if they're anyone who has a different type of system to what Silva would be be running. Uh, that's a lot of changeover, right there. Uh, I'm. I mean, I I this whole time I've been thinking that I want to see. I want I want to see evidence of a of an Everton plan. You know, I want to I want the board to say this is our plan. Um and I didn't really have any very good reasons uh, as far as Silva staying. I have difficulty with that. Um however, I think you can make a conversation out of it. You can. You know, um for the reasons that we've mentioned, there's a conversation there. Um one other thing that hasn't been mentioned is the fact that and I don't think this is a good reason either, Paul. <laughs> but uh, but the, the fact that players like Richarlison are so tied to Silva, what happens there? But you can't be like caught no. b- b- with, for reasons like that. You know what I mean? But it is a thing. It is something that we'll have to deal with. All right? I don't know if Richarlison, I don't know how long he would stay if Silva was gone. I don't know, um, or would want to stay. So, these are things to think about. Um, so, I think that's fodder for a decent Silva conversation. Um, however, Terry makes the argument he would prefer Silva to stay if these four names that I'm about to say are the only ones. Uh, can we just right off the bat and say Mark Hughes is not is not an option for either for any of us? Paul, you want to start with that? Can just can we just go ahead and knock that one Mark off? Mark Hughes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be happy seeing Mark Hughes manage Southport FC. Never mind Evan. You know I mean? I, I, the guy's finished. The guy's not going to get a job in the Premier League. Surely he's like Alan Pardew. He's he's blacklisted. Any club that throws him a bone just must have just a really really stupid chairman at this point. Okay, Thomas. Mark Hughes at, I think an Connery's option? popular belief. I think Mark Hughes could be one of the most the smartest appointments since David Moyes, pretty much. No, I'm joking, don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it'd be absolutely disastrous. Worried, man. <laughs> the bloke, bloke doesn't even come with like the Allardyce defensive grit. He comes with absolutely nothing. He comes with a rubbish win rate everywhere he goes. He's not. He, he wasn't even a successful manager where he was ever, pretty much. So no, he'd be absolutely disastrous. I just want to say you got me. <laughs> I, you you legit had me. I was like, where is Thomas coming from on this? He must have met Mark Hughes at some point and knows he's like this nice guy or something. <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, Terry, you want to just address that one real quick? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that Dave Hedgehog, look him up if you don't know who he is, is not just a false flag option um, be, to make people more agreeable to the actual realistic options because if you put in front of me Moyes or mm. Hughes and I really don't want Moyes but I'd pick Moyes the man Hughes had 21.7% win percentage in his last job and he's going to get a new job at a better club do me a favour absolutely not it would just literally make us the laughing stock of Europe if we employed that man ok so what's the name uh, sorry uh, what's the name of that guy who's really tied into Mishiri he's called Kaya somebody he's an agent Jim Brocken. Yeah, he's Mark Hughes' agent and he's good friends with Mishiri. I think that's all that link will be. That'll just be people thinking... I think that guy will probably have said that to Mishiri and Mishiri, if he's got any sense at all, have laughed at him. I think that, Def- that's where that link comes from. I don't think there's anything to it. Definitely think it's a false flag now just to make people not as angry about who we do get. So, oh, it could have been Hughes. Mm. So... Typical fence riding from these guys. Um, just, just not willing to make a stand. Uh, no, uh, it's pretty clear. Um, so uh, let's talk about this uh, manager from the Spanish league, uh, David Moyet. Hmm. 
uh, from Real Sociedad. Uh, yeah, so uh, Toffee Blues put out a poll. Are any of you down with David Moyes? And 65% uh, said no. So as you know, 65 is greater than 50. So that is a majority that says we're not really wanting uh, David Moyes uh, back in the saddle at Everton. Uh, Thomas, thoughts on, on Moyes on this? No, I am being serious here. I'm not saying I want David Moyes. I don't think he's going to be a very good option at all. But what I am saying is, and I feel maybe I've fallen victim to what um, Terry was saying, that maybe Mark Hughes has been flagged to make mm -hmm. it look like David Moyes isn't that bad. But <laughs> at the end of the day, just to maybe cause a discussion, I don't think David Moyes would be the end of the world simply because this is simply based on the fact that the only thing that he seemed to have going for him when he was here for 11 years was that uh, was the, what do you even call it the grit the personality that the squad had and at the end of the day we we have none of that and the that thing is that's the only thing he could probably bring because he's not tactically brilliant he just seemed to be able to motivate a pile of let's be honest absolute rubbish for quite a few years and <laughs> next to Mark Hughes I think he I think he looks like a remarkable prospect but do I think David Moy should come no do I think it would be the end of the world maybe not either because at the end of the day He's, he's better than Mark Hughes. <laughs> Please, just anyone, basically, other, other than that, that blue up there. Uh, Terry. Moyes. Nope, never. It, it's not 2010. Um, Moyes was good while he was here, for the most part. I think he went stale towards the end, personally. But even if you don't, it was a long time ago. What has he done since he left to warrant coming back to the club? Nothing. He's He's... Putting poor everywhere he's been ever since. Even this, even at his very best, which he isn't now, but back in the day when he was at his very best, his greatest strengths were transfers because he, you know, he knew a good player. He very rarely got them wrong. He wouldn't be doing that here. He director of football now, so you don't even get that. Um, and the work rate his teams had, which he built up over a long time. It's funny how. Were you know extolling the virtues of, you know the stability that David Moyes brought to the club whilst looking to sack another manager, doesn't really make sense to me that like, I I just don't want another interim bollocks appointment like we had last time with Allardyce. Although this one won't taste quite as nasty on the tongue as Allardyce was, it's the same thing. It's just, even if he if it's short term, it's like okay we'll just write another season off, and get a merry-go-round manager. To be a placeholder, uh, I just no. If if he's the alternative, I'd rather just stick with Silva, personally. So make a note. Terry has said Allardyce doesn't taste great on the tongue. We feel All right. I just I'm just saying. <laughs> it's Paul Paulinho, what do you got? What do you got on Moise? Um, I think football's moved on and Everton needs to move on and we're a club that for 30 years just hasn't got with the times enough I, I, it would just be a, it would be a step backward going to David Moyes I mean again if it was a choice between David Moyes and Mark Hughes then you'd go with David Moyes but it's it's not progression is it and we're a club that is apparently wanting to progress so Moyes, I'll I'll go easy on him to an extent. I, I don't think he's the, you know, the washed up failure that everyone what paints him as. Uh, things have not gone great for him since he left Everton. The United job was never the right job for him. Sociedad was never the right job for him. Him in Spain, what was all that about? It was never going to work out there. Sunderland was a club that had an awful lot of problems behind the scenes and. It, it wouldn't have mattered if it was Guardiola in charge they, they probably would have went down that season I mean that they were a club that was terminally ill and West Ham you know he didn't do great at West Ham but he, he did what was asked of him he kept them up which was when mm -hmm. which is what they brought him in to do so I, I'm not saying that to justify him coming here I, I don't want him but I, I still think David Moyes could do a decent job for somebody somewhere I don't think he's an absolute busted flush I just I don't think Everton Football Club in 2019 is where David Moyes belongs. I just don't think his style of management would, would work here anymore. 
if this was February or March, I would be more interested in this conversation. You know what I mean? Because then it's like, okay, we need, we're, we're really struggling and we want to make sure that every, you know, we need some stabilization, whatever. If we were worried about relegation in March, let's talk about Moyes. Let's have the conversation. But one of the reasons we brought in a director of football, all right, is transitioning from manager to manager. All right, the idea of there being a seamless transition going from one to the other. Why would you, I mean, I feel like if you're, if you're gonna go from Silva to someone else, there needs to be, it needs to be a manager that's more similar to what Silva does. All right, more similar to, the, to certain ways that Silva, you know, manages a game, something. And I'm trying to, I feel like Hughes and Moyes immediately, I'm like, they're not that similar yeah. with what he would be doing. Well, also, you know? there's, there's st still something to fight for this season. I know it's, oh, it's, yes. still, it's really bleak <laughs> at the moment, but we're still in the League Cup. The FA Cup hasn't started yet. There's still a lot of games to go. I, I, I think Europe's gone, sadly. I don't think that's going to happen, but there's still something. This season could still be something positive. Something positive could still happen that gives fans hope for the future. We could, we could ho hopefully win one of the Cups or we could get... You know, a big win or two that gets the fans pumped up. That, none of those scenarios are going to happen with, with, with Moyes or Hughes, are they? We're not going to win a cup with either one of them. We're not going to beat any of the top six, home or away, one of those as managers. We've just been doing what we did with Allardyce a couple of seasons ago, where we're basically just winning all the games against Cannon Fodder. And if, it, mm. as you said, if it gets to the point where it's February, March, and we are seriously in trouble, then it's okay, we just have to we just have to accept that staying up this season is all we can hope for, but it's not that bad yet. We just all we at the moment we just we know that this manager we have is not good enough for the for the long term. Let's get someone in for the long term. We don't have to think short term into them, at least not in my opinion. Okay, yeah, and I I, I gotta agree and I'm not gonna I actually again being naive Jerry I'm not going to fully write off Europe, European football yet, just because the log jam between like you know sixth and all the way down, uh, not maybe all the way down to the bottom, but you know what I mean. It's pretty tight. It's pretty tight in terms of points. And you go on a little run, not doing anything stupid for a little while, you're actually going to find yourself in that in that scrap. Um, so yeah. Uh, the season still has a lot to it. So if we're thinking about, I mean, not going with a stopgap solution, instead thinking about someone for the long term, these next two options technically are long-term names. Okay? One of them has a lot of Premier League experience. One of them has zero experience as a manager. Okay? None. All right? So let's start with, uh, let's start with the one who has never managed a team. Uh, Mikel Arteta. Uh, Toffee Blues put out a poll. 83% said yes, they're, they're okay with Arteta as our next manager. Now, let's start with Thomas. He hasn't gotten to start one of these yet. What do you think about Arteta as a possibility, Thomas? I think tactically, potentially. The thing, the thing is, making an argument for Mikel Arteta, you've got absolutely nothing to base it off. And that's, that's the problem, because... We don't fully know how much involvement he has at City. A couple of the players have come out at times and said he's actually very important. He's good at man management. Like he's good at you know, telling players what to do in a game. Could he do that for a, a full 11 every game? Maybe not. At City, it's probably very easy to be an assistant manager under Pep Guardiola. I'm not saying that Mikel Arteta is not qualified, but it's, it's probably a pretty pretty fun job. It's probably a pretty easy job. You've got a lot of brilliant, brilliant players who need less coaching than... You know, Theo Walcott does down the right hand side or Morgan Schneider in defensive midfield. I think it would be an interesting one. I think it's a bit football manager esque. I I'm not sure I ever really saw this coming, you know, years ago. Right now, maybe not. Be simply because w will it make that much of a change all of a sudden that we're bringing in some person that's untested? Because at the end of the day, Margot Silva was still relatively untested. And even when he was tested, when he came in, he hadn't really passed the test necessarily. So I think maybe an interesting one, but maybe not. That's not a sort of particularly clear one. 
it, it could be interesting, but maybe not what we're looking for at the moment. <laughs> oh, Thomas. <laughs> uh, so, maybe interesting, maybe not. Let's go. Let's move to Paul Arteta. How does that strike you, bud? Not for me. Um, again, it goes back to what I was saying. A few. Um, let, if let's say if if we were in the final stretch of the season and we were really really in trouble, and we just needed a figurehead to come in and be the manager, just someone who would really get the fans fired up and get a great atmosphere at Goodison, and we could win games just with a bare pit atmosphere, then I think someone like Arteta would make sense. But I think, I think a figurehead, a, a guy who is well-liked by supporters, isn't necessarily what we need. We had that with Unsworth a couple of years ago. He was another guy who had a lot of people saying good things about him. He was doing great with the youth team. The supporters love him, have a big soft spot for him. He, he made the step up and he, he proved not good enough in the end. Now, Arteta could be the next Pep Guardiola. He could be another David Unsworth. We don't know. For me, it's it's just too big a gamble. Do you know what I mean? If we, as I said, if we were in a spot where we just needed some passion, we just needed some points by hook or by crook, and our best chance to get those points is just by getting the fans totally united and scrapping for everything, then that would probably make sense. But as a long-term custodian, someone to come in and build something, I just Arteta just hasn't got the CV for me. He hasn't got any CV practically, has right. he? So. No, Arteta is a pass for me, personally. Terry? Arteta is definitely the most interesting one of the four names mentioned because he's got the mystery factor. Um, he's got, you know, he's got the most pros in his column for me because he's got, you know, the the connection with the fans. Um, you know, he, he'd be afforded more patience than any of those other managers would be, um, by supporters at least. Um, we know he's coming from a good sort of academy almost, you know, working with Guardiola. I don't put a lot of stock into that. I know some people do because Paul Clement was with um, Ancelotti and he wasn't very good in his own right. As the, it, he could be our Lampard, but he could be our Solskjaer as well. I, I think it's a mistake, personally. I, if you... If you ask me, I, I just don't think a driver with a provisional driving license can drive an F1 car. It's it's too big a job for your first job. I don't think he's ever like taken a reserve game and under 11 to match anything. It's um, it's the most palatable though of all the choices, just because he's a young manager with a big reputation and he'd be, you know people would root for him where it's it's easier to, if you have to have one of those four he's the easiest to get behind the others feel like negative sort of sideways steps at best whereas Arteta feels like okay we're going to go for a we're going to roll the dice on this young manager but I, I think it, I, it, it is like Paul says a big gamble it's it's probably too much of a gamble I th- I'd like it to be someone with a little bit more under their belt than Arteta but, and I'm sorry if I'm jumping on your closing segment question, Jerry. Of the four mentioned, if it had to be one of them four, it'd probably be Arteta. But that's um, I'd, I'd still stand by my statement of I'd rather keep silver than any of the four. Yeah. Well, there goes my closing <laughs> question, it's Terry. It's like picking the nicest guy in prison, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that really wasn't my closing question, Terry. Uh, gonna, we we're going to talk about your favorite vegetable, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so, I Arteta is my my I, I'm I'm divide I'm kind of divided on this. Um, I will say when I think about Arteta, I think about my prediction for how Lampard would do. Okay, I didn't really think he was going to do that great. Um, I saw what he did at you know Derby County. Yeah, but I didn't think he was going. I didn't think he was. I thought it was going to take him longer at Chelsea. Two action now. Granted, it's still yeah, early days. I was, sorry, I was going to say that the season's still young. Lampard could still crash and burn. It really is. People are, for my opinion, mm-hmm. getting on jumping on top of Lampard too quickly. He, he had a slow start. Mm. It's picked up now. It could fall off a cliff. Chelsea is just a weird club. 
Mm-hmm. They always have Conte had them playing some absolutely amazing stuff, and then it it it, it, it filtered out, didn't it? In that second season. So mm-hmm. you know, I would I wouldn't be um, anointing Lampard as the next big thing just yet myself. Okay, uh, I would, but I was thinking though, if we were going to go someone with no experience, managerial experience, it seems like Arteta would be the guy. If we were going to go with someone with zero Premier League managerial experience, that's our guy. Um, so, curious, very curious situation. Um, last name that I'm going to be submitting, and then I'll get a few from you guys. Um, he's been been with Bournemouth for a while. Uh, Eddie Howe. So, we will start with, uh, let's see here, let's start with Terry this time. The um, the English silver, Eddie Howe. What is the point? He's 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 not a big enough manager. Now I know we've mentioned other managers who um, probably aren't as good as um, as Howe, but it's it's not a it's not a simple you know power level type of thing. It's you know Howe has done a really really good job at Bournemouth. He's turned the team around with a lot you know the club around with League One players and brought them into the Premier League and got them stable but he I just can't see him making the step up to Everton he, 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 right now I think I saw an article where he was linked today and it said something like oh he's only had one win in seven uh, so he'd be open to the change like he would be sacked at Everton if he had that much it's like that that sort of run he'd be sacked if he went on a run where I think he, he didn't win a game in nine uh, the last season or the season before it's like um, no, that you, you can't. That that's why we're getting rid of Silver because of runs are like that. So what would be the point in just replacing them with another version of Silver, but without the eighteen months in the job and and the you know the support of all the players? A lot of the players have been brought in by Silver. Why are you replacing them with someone who for me is no better and hasn't got the benefits of Silver, which is the connection with a lot of the players? Again, I keep banging the point home. If it's that or Silver, I'd stick with Silver. All right, Paul. Um, I can only echo what Terry said. Really, I, I mean, I just I don't see what the difference is between them, other than their nationality and the fact that Eddie Howe smiles a lot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, their CVs are actually very similar when you look at them. Marco Silva and Eddie Howe. They took over these two tiny clubs. Um, it was Estoril or in Portugal. And Bournemouth in England, Freddie Howe, you know, they took these clubs kind of up from nothing and kind of got them up to the top league and kept them there and made their name that way. But kind of after that, there's not really much to write home about. Uh, you know, Silver went abroad and won the Greek League, you know, well done. And I think he had a spell in Portugal at Sport in Lisbon. Um, Eddie Howe went to Burnley, wasn't there long, f- flamed out at Burnley, went back to Bournemouth and. Uh, got as I said, got them in the Premier League, but f- there's just there's nothing about Eddie Howe that makes me look and think I really like that. I'd, I'd love to see a bit of Aaron Everton. It, it, it's just pretty football, pass, pass, pass. If you love that sort of thing, then he's the manager for you. But I I don't care about how many passes we do in a game. All I care about is goals, and I certainly mm-hmm. don't care don't care for a manager who, as Terry said, goes on these awful runs of one and nine one win in seven gets beat 4-0 uh, by mid-table t- sides which happens a lot with Bournemouth they're just they're, they're so topsy-turvy mm-hmm. so Eddie Howe I, I think he will probably step up at some point but Everton's too big a step up I think he's better suited to a West Ham or a Newcastle or something like that I think Everton is I, I, he's not done anything to, uh, anywhere near enough to merit the Everton job and if we were going to again it's a gamble and if we're going to gamble I'd rather gamble on Someone like Arteta. If that moment. Okay. Thomas, anything on Eddie Howe that hasn't been said yet? Um, well, <laughs> I, we don't know how much of this would go on if he became the Everton manager, but he's been pretty disastrous with money, kind of while he's been at Bournemouth. You know, I think it was twenty million on Solanke. Like, I don't even know what kind of a transfer that is. I had a feeling they that's gave, what you were going to mention. They gave a lot of money to the fool <laughs> when he was like fifty or something. You know, his money's not good. He, like, he'd walk into a shop, like. Joel Nye, you know, he'd walk into a shop and spend like 
ten pound on a Twix. You know, he just he just seems to overpay and he doesn't seem to know where the value is in the market. And there's been so many complaints about our money being misspent here and there. And I don't think he'd come in and do anything different, like like uh, the like the McAllisters were saying. Like I don't think he'll be anything special or anything like significant or different that we need to be honest. I mean, yeah, I. There are things I love about Eddie Howe. You know, I actually think, I think, I mean, he's somebody who I think would be really, really, uh, he would take this as like maybe the biggest job he'll ever have. And he would treat it like that, which is cool. You know, I like that. You know, I like it. someone saying that right there, that's probably going to be the pinnacle of my career. I'm going to, I'm going to stay there for a long, long time and make them amazing. I think he would treat it like that. I like that because I feel like don't I remember him being like a having yeah, connections to Everton? Yeah, boyhood Evertonian. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's I like that too. All right. Um, having said that, um, I would would have liked to have seen more consistency in Bournemouth in terms of results year after year. All right. I think, uh, and also I have this thing about I I I like a stout defense that's just something I feel like uh, I feel like Everton should have that I feel like that's just something historically Everton should have is just a brick wall and for me that just kind of I feel like Eddie Howe would it would be a little bit more free-flowing football yeah and you know you unless know? results were absolutely fantastic I think fans would get bored of Eddie Howe's pass and style very quick it's the same way we did with Martinez I think the atmosphere at the games would be would be very very sulky and moody again they are currently the way they are they're like that anyway but i remember mm. what it was like under martinez where fans just fans oh, would sit God. there like this yeah well and the, the, the problem is i think fans are cool with sitting there like that if if eventually you feel like there's going to be a point eventually you feel like there's going to be a climax Instead of you're gonna pass, 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 and then you get around the 18, and then you know what? Let's move back again. Yeah, there's no, you know, <laughs> there's no growth type thing. Bournemouth haven't changed at all in the time he brought them up, and Bournemouth are, mm. Bournemouth are content with that. They're happy to just be in the Premier League, like hook or by crook. But there's no progression. Like it's what mm. what is he trying to build? Type thing. It's just it just seems like they're spinning the tires, and Eddie Eddie Howe is content to spin his tyres at Bournemouth that's why I think Eddie Howe needs to leave Bournemouth but not to Everton Ever- Everton's a no-no ok and I just want to point out that uh, Toffee Blues ran a poll on this 54% of Toffee Blues voters said yes to Eddie Howe so if you go on the percentages Toffee Blues supporters Arteta is the top choice of the, the four listed Eddie Howe, then Moyes and Hughes, no vote was taken, because why? Um, so, lastly, this is ran. This has just been. This has run a. This has been just such a gargantuan segment. But let's consider the topic. It it makes sense. Really quickly, let's not let's not give a big huge. I just want each one of you give your selection for who a reasonable choice for manager that's not listed. Make it reasonable, and if you got nobody, just say it. All right. So, Thomas. Oh, awful. Um, Marcelino. Marcelino. Why? I don't know. I've just seen his name. I just didn't want to be the one without a name. I actually don't know anything about him. I think he might play a four four two or something. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't actually know anything about him. And that, that was pretty much it. So, no, I, I can't even really think of anyone else at the moment. Pochettino. Let's let's take him. Obviously not, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Paul, I know yours. Yeah, uh, mine would be Nico Kovac, who was managing Bayern Munich until recently. He was the manager of Frankfurt before that, and he was very much like a, sort of what David Moyes was in the in the middle part of his reign at Everton. You know, it was a slow pro- build, you know, he was getting the most out of the least, and like David Moyes at Everton, he got the opportunity for the big job. He's in the minds of Bayern Munich's hierarchy, proved to be someone who was deserving of a big step up. 
he got the job and in his first season he won the double now I know normally that's nothing to really shout about when you're Bayern Munich because they win trophies in that league every year but a lot's been going on at Bayern Munich in the past year or so the older stars are all retired or or really over the hill Um there's been a lot of like internal conflict as well, apparently. And for me, I, I I think he is someone who is worth discussing because he's won trophies. He won a cup at Frankfurt. He's won the, the domestic double at Bayern Munich in a season where they were not fancy to win it. Because you know Dortmund were very strong that year. Dortmund were top of the league for most of the season with the likes of Jade mm-hmm. Sancho and Pulisic and things like that and Bayern Munich had this barnstorming run at the end to, t- to end up taking the title again and the, the reason he's left a few weeks ago is it says more about Bayern Munich than it does him I like think apparently he read some home truths to a couple of the senior players the people with a lot of influence and they mm. went above his head to the Bayern Munich board the president and they decided to part ways because a lot of players who are kind of tied to Bayern Munich I'm not going to say the names but you know they are like Mr Bayern Munich one of them's a goalkeeper one of them's a, a forward they kind of said listen it's him or us and you know it's not the manager who sells shirts is it with his name on the back I I, I think he, he's met it, he met it to discussion because I think he's got enough on his record mm-hmm. to suggest that he could do very well in the Premier League and I agree, he's a name that I thought of. I was worried about the transition from Bundesliga to Premier League. That was my, that was my big thing on that. But uh, he is a talented young coach, he's, he's, and he does have a, a CV. Yeah. He does. And he has coached at a really high level. he's got a personality as well. The, the, fact, that he was, he, the mm-hmm. fact that he had the bravery to try and make those changes that he was trying to make at Bayern Munich, the fact that he kind of stood up to these players and told them what he didn't want to hear. And it's not ended well for him, but for me, that says more about Bayern Munich than it does about him. Whereas a lot of managers would be there, okay. and a lot of managers would go into a job like that and just be happy to be there. Terry, Terry, who who is your name? And and let's not say uh, Antonio Hiberto. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um... <laughs> It's okay if you don't have a name, man. You know, it's all right. He, Lucien Favre is on the brink at, um, at Dortmund. Mm-hmm. Now, I know I, I'm, I'm always the first to say some fans are unrealistic with who we could get, but he was interested in the Everton job before he went there. He was very interested, and we went the other way. Now, he's currently in a job, but he's not going to leave Dortmund for us, but may possibly you know, stick with Silver and then act if he becomes available. But on the other hand, mm-hmm. you know, could be beaten out to that by the likes of Arsenal or play or teams like that. I don't know. There's a, there's an argument he made for Rafa Benitez. That's that's sort of a heart versus head kind of thing. Obviously, he comes with a massive pedigree of of um. Well, I don't even want to say a massive pedigree of success because I, I think it's overstated the cups he's won. He did win cups, but he was with the luckiest team in football when he won his major trophies so whether that was him or them I'm not sure but he does get an awful lot out of a small amount like he proved at Newcastle um, but it, I just don't think he, I've, I've, I've bounced back and forward on it but I think a lot of people even the people who would want Benitez how just square the fact that he's a manager who's shown such massive disrespect to the club in the past like football's an emotional game you don't you 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 can't take the emotion out of it and look at it coldly and go, "Oh well, he did this, so he shouldn't." No, I'd have to. You'd have to. You'd have to be the world's best manager or the top five managers in the world for me to forget that you called Everton a small club. Not only is it really insulting, but it's also it shows a lack and a shocking lack of understanding of English football. If you think that's true, but he's another name on a lot of supporters' lips. I don't I don't even know if I agree with it. I sort of do sometimes and don't the others, but it's just one of the names who haven't come up. If you ask me, stick with Silver until a much more clear improvement becomes available. Or if there is one and we don't know about it, get him in. But for the names we've heard in the press, I'm, I'm not convinced. See, that's the thing. I feel like there are more names, and we haven't really scoured looking the way one would hope 
that the Everton board have been scouring. We haven't really, I haven't really done a lot of research. I will say the one name that hasn't been mentioned much that's probably unrealistic. Since Thomas said Pochettino, I just wanted to give it an unrealistic shout. Um, Allegri from Juve, who used to be the manager at Juventus. I would be curious to see what he would do with the defense. I would be curious to see what he would be able to pull off with some with some of our you know bigger name signings. I would be I I don't know. He's older, and I don't think he's realistic. But I'd be curious to see something like that happening. It would be it would be a big name, but I'm just not sure. If, I almost wonder if he's too old. We may need to, and I say that being like you know old myself. Uh, he's he's got to be older than me, dude. And that is, to me, like, if you're older than me, then holy yeah. hell. If, he, if he's less than 50, I, I wouldn't say he's too old. I feel like he's older than Yeah, he's going to be. He, he, I know he's been around be. for a long he time, hasn't he? Be. He was with AC Milan before he was with Juventus, and he was with Juventus a long while. But, mm. I would be curious to see how work. he would wrangle. He's, he's going to work again, so, he's gonna work again somewhere, isn't he? So. Yeah, um, but you know, he's, he's been linked with a lot of big jobs, but he just they always seem to not, for corruption. You're not going to leave. You're not going to step from Juventus into a club that's not even in Europe. It's the only reason I say Fav is because he was interested previously, and it might he might still have an interest if he loses his Dortmund job. I don't think Allegri's going. to... I think the only club he'd go to if they were outside of Europe would be Man United. Um, so it's either going to be a mega name club or a club that's firmly and safely in Champions League every year. Just a, just a, just a, an aisle that we can't afford to shop in, I'm afraid, for me. Go, go, just quickly, yeah, going back to what Jerry said, these four managers who we're getting linked with, they are not the only options. You know what I mean? There are, yeah, there are yeah. a lot of managers out there on the continent who are probably around Europa League level, who we could probably get if we waved enough money at them. As I, I mentioned Kovac, Marcelino, who Thomas mentioned. Marcelino did wonders for Valencia. He, he went into Valencia after Gary Neville mm-hmm. and balls it up. And they were basically like a house that was on fire and fallen down. And he united the Valencia fan base, who are notoriously fickle and notoriously hot-tempered. He got them right behind him and won them a trophy and got them back in the top four. And the only reason he's not at Valencia now is because they're lunatic owner basically forced him out and the strength of feeling was after he left that the players actually went on strike and refused to train and mm. there was riots in the streets there's there's other names as well um who's the guy who i, I don't think he's available now but he, he was available until a few weeks ago uh, rudy garcia i think has gone to leon julian lopetegui who's gone to Sevilla. just there's, there are a lot of names on the continent mm. who are not out of Everton's league just sadly it's just bad timing yeah, like Bob Bradley, right? <laughs> I like Bob. I think Bob got a bad rap. This one, to be I actually, I actually do like Bob. I, I, but I don't, I don't think he needs to be coming to Everton anytime soon. But I think he's better than he showed. Yeah, at, if, at if he were English, he'd have had another two Premier League jobs by now. It's only because he's American. He, mm-hmm. he, these idiots like Allardyce and um, the old boys. Yeah, the talk. The old boys through pretend that being an English manager is a hindrance when the, there's so many British managers who are getting jobs they've got no right to go into because they're British. But um, yeah, Paul Paul's right. I hope we're looking outside of this lazy four names that we've got because but mm, uh, the way the way you sold Marcelino there, he went into a club with fickle, hostile fans and United well, yeah, them, got them in the top go four. I'll have a bit of that, and he plays four four two. He's perfect, and his name's Marcelino, Marcel, and Marcelino. Make it happen. Look at <laughs> it's just mentioned to what I said a moment ago about Allegri. These managers are going to work again. <laughs> They're going to get jobs somewhere, mm-hmm. and you, you, you can't be in the conversation if you don't at least go to them and make them an offer and get them round a table and try and sell them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, 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 Thomas, you've convinced us on Marcelino. Well, well done. Extensive, uh, extensive. <laughs> look look, look at how. I mean, he just. Thomas just wouldn't shut up about Marcelino, you know what I mean? He's <laughs> I, I honestly, as long as the person who chooses the next manager is not Denise Barrett-Baxendale, is not Bill Kenwright, and is not Mar- um, 
Farhad Mashiri. I want the man to pick, pick the next manager to be Marcel Brands. That's his job. That's what we want him to do. To you know, Saint Saint Marcel in the, in the shrine there behind Jerry. Um, yeah. I strategically did not light the candle yeah. here though, <laughs> because I'm angry. What, what what would be the point in letting let's let's have it right, Bill Kenwright, get his mate David Moyes back into the club? Um, when we've tried, got Marcel there. Tried his absolute best to get Unsworth the job two years ago. Mm-hmm. There's only one person pushing for David Moyes if it is true, and you know it's not Marcel. Big blue bill, but that's a, another video. Just, just briefly before we finish, <laughs> I, I think the fact, I think it was, if it was going to be Moyes, it would have been announced yesterday or today, because he's only a, mm. he, Moyes is only a thirty-second phone call away. You know he is. You know he's standing, he's sitting wherever he is, waiting by his phone wait, for it to ring. I think the fact that it's not been announced makes me hope. Hopefully, maybe I could be wrong. It, it's given me hope that maybe the phone calls are going somewhere else, and that we are maybe sounds of people out. Because uh, Moyes, Moyes would moonwalk back to Goodison. He'd, he'd be here already. I think if it was going to be if it was going to be Moyes, it will only be Moyes now if everybody else turns us down, which hopefully we don't. All right. Anything else on this, guys? Because I feel like we've given this ample attention, uh, ample attention, uh, having crossed the fifty-minute threshold. <laughs> I feel like all of us just finished a marathon. We're like sweating. We need water. I've almost finished mine. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think we're, we're we're trying to make sure there's no stone unturned in this particular instance. However, I do think there's going to have to be another follow up at this at some point that really examines the options that are out there. That really, really, where we really get into the nitty gritty of that. Right. So. Um, so I guess that's it for our managerial situation segment. Uh, if you're digging the Toffee Blues, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, just so you know, if you check out the link there in the uh, down down there below in the description, there it is. You you see it. Uh, you can click on that, and we've got a new partnership. So basically, you put in the code Toffee Blues Five, and you'll get uh, get a discount on some Everton gear. All right, so uh, lately they've been having some discounts already, so add our discount to their discount, and it's just like a compound discount. It, it becomes like a, a, a Voltron of a discount. It's massive. It forms together to, to be bigger, so it's good. Enjoy it. You could be helping, helping yourself, helping Everton, and helping us all at the same time. La, la, la. All right, so if you want more Paul, uh, check his Twitter. He'll let you know when and where he's going to be. If you want some, uh, you want some riveting debate, uh, yeah, just tweet at him. Yeah. Um, also, you want more Terry? Uh, Liverpool Echo Fan Jury. Uh, they, they allow his Everton-based brain droppings to appear on their page. So check that out. Um, and uh, Thomas, you can see what he's bringing to the table. If you check Everton uh, or the Toffee Blues social media, where he live tweets and all that hot stuff. Um, additionally, he does analysis on the Toffee Blues website. That's it. That's it. Uh, here, if you are uh, on the video, if you're watching this via video, check out, uh, pop over to the podcast where we're going to do a quiz. These three, three brains enter, one brain leaves is what's happening. We're going to do a quiz, Dave Moyes edition. What does that mean? You'll find out if you check it out. Much love to everybody. Um, try to stay strong. This is a, this is a, not a great time, but we'll get through it. Weather the storm. All right. Bye. <laughs>